Chris the Fast, the third place runner of Battle for Bikini Bottom 80%, dragged his ball sack across his disc in an attempt to improve his leg clips. In my last video, we discussed the events leading up to the earth shattering discovery of stinky disc strategies in Battle for Bikini Bottom speedruns. And since then, I've seen a lot of interest, discussion, and misconceptions about the whole situation. I mean, you can only imagine how my parents felt after hearing them going around slobbering on dirty discs. So we're going to cover all that and get into how this community is adapting to our new knowledge of how the game works, which is arguably far more important. So I left a pinned comment on the last video trying to clear up some of the misconceptions people had, ranging from the short time it took to make the video all the way up to Ketchup Disc. It's there if you want to read it, but here we're only going to review the ones that are relevant to this video, simply because I know nobody wants to sit around and read YouTube comments. Speedrunning may have many different interpretations, but one we can surely agree on is its focus on pushing a game to its limits. However, as the hobby is bound to attract more participants than just one, ground rules must be established to balance the integrity of the game itself with competitive fairness. As for printing fingers on a disc, it's something accessible that, if you have fingers for holding a controller in your hands, you should have access to. And if not, I'm sure some of the folks over at Nickelodeon would be thrilled if you use your toes. But the point is, the idea of strategic smudging at a fundamental understanding seems fair and accessible, even if banning discs with fingerprints, scuffs, and scratches were even reasonable, let alone feasible, for a game that's turning 18 years old this year, which nearly everyone is buying in the used condition, and only had one reprint production per console. And it's not like this strategy is at all comparable to the effects of save corruption or Nintendo 64 cartridge tilting anyway, the latter of which has been brought up several times as a comparison to disc smudging from what I've seen. This however, though it sounds good when you say it, is a very poor comparison. Though, I understand why many would reach this conclusion on their own. You see, the act of cartridge tilting can alter bit and memory values which adjust how the cart connects itself to the console. Whereas, obscuring a disc still allows the drive to connect with it in the intended way, it just has a harder time doing so. An analogy I've been using to explain this concept is with reading glasses. Say you're reading a book with blurry glasses. You'd still be able to make out the words, but if your glasses are blurred or even scratched in specific areas while others aren't, you may have a harder time reading some of the words and the letters as a concept consequence of your glasses' natural wear and tear. Now, say you're reading a book with glasses that scramble the letters and words in a way that have no rational meaning. Would you even be reading the same book at that point? You can probably tell by now that these scrambler glasses would represent cartridge tilting in this analogy, and this arbitrary scrambling is exactly why Nintendo 64 communities elect to ban the strategy. But for the sheer amount of data stored on discs, having glasses, I mean a game disc, obscured by fingerprints or natural wear, can impact how the game is played despite the drive still being able to interpret it correctly. If it can't interpret it, the drive will simply deem it unreadable. We just want the drive to struggle a little bit when interpreting some parts, causing the lag that we need for speedruns. As for cartridge tilting, if the only thing it caused were inefficiency, we wouldn't have so many horrifying clips like this one here. So, understanding that even a few fingerprints on a disc can impact how the game lags, you might be wondering how my own disc lathered in my own gamer gunk actually worked. And the answer is actually simple. It didn't. And I thought I made this pretty clear in my video, but I suppose the comedic dramatization caused many to overlook it. I've heard a lot of rumors lately that we've been sweating all over our discs and smearing it around to get easy lag clips, but this couldn't be further from the truth. You see, while experimenting and labbing with a concept like this, it's best to test the extremes to see what kind of results you get, because ruling things out helps you arrive at a conclusion more decisively. An extreme case, a pristine disc never touched by human hands was making some of these lag clips on the Samsung B nearly impossible. And for the other extreme, the sweaty disc, as I mentioned in my last video, was not readable by the Xbox Drive. So, starting fresh and attempting the fingerprint stamp method was the happy middle ground which gave me the results I wanted. And remember that the fingerprints on Swagmaster Dorito's disc were only visible under a bright light as well. The odds are, a surface like the glass on your phone is more smudged than the discs I was using to test. You just can't really tell without looking closely. The fingerprints making lag clips easy rumor is also quite stretched as well because going overboard on fingerprints would just cause the game to run too slowly on a version B drive due to its laser's inherent inconsistency. So they replaced sparingly just so they'd barely work if you mash quickly enough. And if you were having trouble with any of the useful lag clips on a drive other than these newly found Samsung Bs, the disc is not the problem. The problem is that you need to practice more. 
So yes, the fingerprint method did seem to make the Samsung B drives viable for using all four of the lag clips in the any% percent route as opposed to only two, just barely. But as we know, new discoveries lead to more discoveries, and in testing the precise print method on one of my discs, I began to notice some patterns that would make me fear the consequences of venturing so deep down this rabbit hole. Holy shit, man. <laughs> the way I had these smudged, the game would barely start. And in this clip, the intro cutscene before the title screen wouldn't even start. And the THQ startup cutscene slowed to a crawl as it is streamed from the game disc directly. As I mentioned in the previous video, music is also streamed from the disc as well, which is a good indicator of whether your disc is smudged in the right spot to make lag clips more consistent. If the level takes abnormally long to load in music, your lag clips are gonna be nice. Considering pausing and unpausing is constantly triggering these tracks to be loaded, and very slowly. But good lag clips won't give your run a net time save if something like this can randomly happen. At this point, I'd already narrowed down the fingerprint to two or three very specific tiny spots of the disc, which was causing lag clips to work well, yet I was still rarely getting the occasional 20 plus second load, which I hadn't even come across from my first test with the gamer gunk strats. One might view this as a risk reward strategy, but keep in mind there are over 80 different loads throughout the any% percent speed run, quick albeit, but creating more than enough opportunities for this to happen to the point where the probability you run into at least one of these run-killing loads is extraordinarily high. Across a nearly 50 minute run, it just isn't viable. But when you compare this to Swag's disc and laser combo, which was getting lag clips on par with the old Samsung version A while losing no time to loads, you have to wonder what could possibly have been missing. And my disc was fully sanitary except for a few areas where I surgically applied fingerprints and wiped around them to form these little strip-like shapes. So at this point, I suspect that something finer and potentially deeper than fingerprints could be at play here. So I got Swag to clean his disc with dish detergent, and he sent me this. Not to my surprise, there appeared to be some fine scratches and dings on some of these key spots I'd been surgically smudging on my own disc. I could tell because after the past two weeks of experimenting with these Samsung B drives, they leave very permanent traces on our discs in the form of burn rings. In fact, if you showed me this disc without flipping it over, I'd be able to tell you it was a copy of Battle for Bikini Bottom. The burned rings in this disc show where the drive tends to read the most frequently, and these doubled lines shown here have this peculiar scratch right through them. These are the burn lines I used to experiment with my own smudging, and I knew it affected how well the game was loading the music. This phenomenon reminded me of something that happened a couple of years ago with one of our other community members, Fort when he blaze it. Four claimed that one of his discs that was scratched in a very precise spot seemed to make his lag clips work insanely quickly. Unfortunately, this disc is no longer in our possession because a Thompson drive ate it alive. But still, there was enough information gathered at this point to know that it couldn't have just been a coincidence. We'd occasionally joked around the community about lucky discs being a thing, but unfortunately, the meme was now becoming a reality. And with these Samsung B drives practically burning these discs alive, there's no telling how long it would take for any of these holy grails of speedrunning to completely break down anyway. I mean, these drives sound like jet engines compared to the version A. And the pristine disc I was using for over three years with no sign of wear from the Samsung A drive now had burn rings from just two weeks of using it in the Samsung B. I guess the inefficiency and poor laser calibration of these models helped explain why they were replaced by the newer Samsung A versions later down the line of Xboxes. So now we've arrived at the conflict of this video, and I want to formally introduce you to a term I'll be using for the rest of our time here just to make explaining this easier. It's called the meta. Epic gamers and basement dwellers use this term as an abbreviation for most effective tactic available. In speedrunning, the meta is an ever-evolving set of strategies which a player must use to pursue the best time possible. What you need to understand from this section is that the meta is not concerned with what most players are doing, because most players are just average, slightly above average, or slightly below average in skill. But ideally, all players are in pursuit of the meta if they choose to go deep enough. And when crafting guidelines for a speedrunning community, the assumption is always that they will. So with that understood, what is the end game for a Battle for Bikini Bottom speedrunner in this current meta? Well, I actually had this really cool idea. We're gonna reinvent the sewing machine. That's right, Granny's old dust collector is finally gonna get some use once we hire some nerds to type up a program for surgically needling our discs for the best performance and lag on demand. Okay, well you already see this is fucking stupid, right? Just making sure, cause if you're new around here, you probably can't tell what's satire anymore. 
Even if this reckless and degenerate activity were consistently applicable and effective, disk scratch and the perfect spots for speedrunning would just eventually burn out on these faster drives anyway. I'm sure many of you can relate to a childhood story of playing a game disc so much that it just burns out. Well, imagine having to deface all your new ones absolutely perfectly each and every time just to continue contending against your personal best in a speedrun. And the whole idea raises a serious ethical question for hobbyists who dedicate their craft in the name of game preservation. I was on board with this when it was just fingerprints because they wash off, but you'll never get me to willingly scratch a disc of my favorite game, especially when there are so many others out there who have yet to enjoy it. And no, this does not count. Oh, boo-hoo. If you want the fastest time, you gotta resort to extreme measures. That's what it takes to be the best. And I'd usually agree with this statement if these extreme measures were not only making the game less accessible, but also circumventing the actual game to get a faster time. Some of you may know this circumvention as a condensed term, hardware manipulation. Oh, no! But what does it mean? In speedrunning, hardware manipulation refers to a malfunction that goes beyond the capability of the program as a strategy to go fast. Some communities may define or enforce this differently, but in our community, it is an unintended consequence that is entirely caused by the hardware the game is being played on. <laughs> Many other communities share these values as well. To test your understanding, let's try a couple of examples. In a Super Mario Sunshine 120 Shine speedrun, the memory card is inserted to the console to maintain a flood hover for obtaining this blue coin, then removed before landing and leaving the level to avoid the save game prop for the rest of the run. Damn, that looks difficult. Is this an instance of hardware manipulation? No, because despite the memory card and console being hardware used for the exploit, the game itself has program responses for inserting, interpreting, and removing the memory card from the Wii. Inserting the memory card is simply completing a circuit which is interpreted by the game. Much like how pressing down the A button of a controller, the controller being the hardware, is a circuit completion. It's really that simple. Now let's try another. In a Pac-Man World speedrun, it is possible to eject the disc of the PlayStation 2 to prevent the game from rendering collision on this door, allowing the player to walk through. Is this an instance of hardware manipulation? Yes, and the Pac-Man community came to this conclusion many years ago actually. Ejecting the disc is not exploiting an in-game function, rather it is preventing the game from functioning. With this you may assume that I am claiming disc scratching and blurring is a form of hardware manipulation, as it is, especially in some extreme cases, preventing the game's functionality rather than exploiting it. And even if this were enforceable, don't worry, we don't have to get into the is a disc hardware or software debate, because that's not where I'm going with this at all. I'm actually suggesting that lag clips, even barring all the tampering with the disc, laser, and drive, are a form of hardware manipulation. Or am I? Let's go even deeper. The term manipulation may imply intent, but intent aside, the key here is that hardware manipulation prevents or limits the functionality of a game in a matter useful for accomplishing a goal. Whether a community decides to ban hardware manipulation is their own prerogative, but in the Battle for Bikini Bottom community, there is precedent for banning this type of strategy in the form of PlayStation 2 Disc Eject. Much like in Pac-Man World, it can be used to alter collision through interference, and essentially functions as a free lag clip on that console only. To test whether lag clips are a product of interfering with hardware, the Xbox version of the game in this clip is loaded onto a hard disk drive, entirely avoiding the need for an optical drive and disk to play the game. As you can see, even with a programmed auto masher shown here, inputting at the inhuman rate of 60 inputs per second, it's clear that the game does not budge at all. Lag clips are impossible without the disk as a format for playing the game. Without the disk drive, the time it takes for the drive's laser to load the game's tracks cannot be exploited, nor can its effectiveness of reading these tracks, simply because it's all removed from the equation. So, for the past two and a half years, have lag clips been a form of hardware manipulation the entire time? Perhaps, yet perhaps not. This line of thinking typically raises more questions than answers. When optimizing a game to be played on a 6th generation console, the developers of Battle for Bikini Bottom were not creating a game with the expectation of it being downloaded to a hard disk, as many games were if they were released in the 7th generation or later. Growing up with my Xbox 360, I always made sure to download my favorite games to make the experience far more enjoyable than it ever could have been, just letting the 360 chug along on that flimsy disk. But when optimizing a game for the original Xbox, on which disk downloads were not a native feature yet, perhaps the developers programming a one frame pause menu that reads the disc to flip tracks left the game wide open for exploitation. Well, we know it did, but it was meant to be rhetorical. 
And this is what places lag clips in this strange gray area. It is by definition a function of the way the game was coded and the inputs available on your controller while playing. There's even a way to recreate it through Dolphin Memory Engine, which is used for labbing some of these lag strategies for speedruns on the Xbox version. But it is also a consequence of the old days of gaming when information was streamed directly from these discs and read by flimsy lasers that, after nearly two decades, have in many cases just about reached their expiration or are close to it. It helps explain why some of these Samsung B drives are capable of consistent lag clips with the right disc combo. The worn down drive and disc strategy will keep becoming more and more effective as time goes on, until the drive or disc themselves are not. And essentially, the developers of Battle for Bikini Bottom gave us a controller bound function to lag the game all because it was published just a few years short of the 7th generation. Even if banning lag clips and erasing two and a half years of the game's history were an easy or justifiable option, it's still unclear whether banning lag clips itself is even justifiable based on our now expansive knowledge of how they work. The game in this meta was left in limbo, and it required intervention. The first option we considered was banning these Samsung B drives. However, banning official hardware is a slippery slope. Despite these drives being inconsistent, rapidly depleting, and extremely sensitive to tiny scuffs and scratches of these 18-year-old discs, they are still official hardware that by banning would only leave the game less accessible. As we learned in our past investigation, these drives are extremely common, and would only make finding a viable Xbox for speedrunning the game even more annoying than it already is having the other four drives floating around, even if we do have date ranges for them. And this wouldn't even be that much of an issue if some of these drives weren't complete crap like the Thompson. Furthermore, even even though we have extensive knowledge on how to find the right drives, it's unknown whether most of the sellers would even cooperate with you to eject the disc tray and send a photo of it. As we established earlier, accessibility must be balanced with the integrity of the game. Limiting the game's accessibility by banning an official disc drive only harms the progress of the game itself and the community pushing it to its limits. The knowledge of how these discs can be tampered with, indistinguishably from natural wear and tear, would also lead to a destructive meta on the other drives as well, with printing and scratching perhaps making even more lag clips in newer spots possible, and part of the meta for achieving the best possible time. The stinky gamer ketchup disc extravaganza had opened up a can of gamer worms, and the game would never be the same, so long as it was still being violated by the hardware it's played on. A more progressive approach was becoming the only conceivable option. Here's how our decisiveness saved Battle for Bikini Bottom from the most degenerate metagaming in all of speedrunning. Not surprisingly, the original Xbox's PC-like build and exceptional performance during its own era has attracted the interest of soft modding communities since the console's inception. Soft modding has already been allowed in the Battle for Bikini Bottom community for quite some time now, as it allows PAL users to region unlock their Xboxes for playing the NTSC version, a popular compromise in other speedrunning communities as well. As we covered in part 1 of the Gamer Gunk Saga, all models of the original Xbox are stocked with hard disk drives as well, for storing game save files quite ahead of its time compared to the external memory storage, memory cards as you may know them, used by the PlayStation 2 and GameCube of the same generation. Unfortunately, however, Microsoft at the time did not take advantage of its incredibly exceptional 8-10 to 10 gigabytes of hard disk space on all of its consoles by allowing users to download games for increased performance. A staple feature of all Xboxes from then future generations. There is a community made soft mod, however, that fixes this. Unleash X is currently the most popular Xbox soft modded dashboard, which is quite similar to Homebrew if you're familiar with soft modding the Nintendo Wii. Homebrew is an incredible feature for many Nintendo speed games, making past virtual console titles far more accessible and even allowing practice code injection for some communities to iron out their movement and trick consistency. Unfortunately, due to the Wii's tiny disk space of 512 megabytes, soft modders must play downloaded games on an external drive with extra storage to counteract the limitations of their console, whereas the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 of the same gen generation have more than enough storage space to download multiple full-length games. Having to use external storage would obviously lead to many hardware consistency issues had the GameCube and Wii speedrunning communities elected to download their games, as the infinite number of external drives, USBs, and SD cards available for playing these games off of would simply create a competition for who can find the fastest stick to shove in their Wii Wii. But fortunately for us, much like the PS3 and Xbox 360 of their own generation, the original Xbox has more than enough storage in its native hard drive to download Battle for Bikini Bottom through a dashboard tool natively available with Unleash X. By playing off a hard disk drive, inconsistencies caused by the optical drive and disk combinations are completely removed, as even the disk can be entirely removed from the console. Lag clips are therefore rendered impossible on this setup. And removing the disk drive as a factor also speeds up the load times for BFBB to their true potential on the hardware for which the game was conceived. 
So even with the loss of lag clips, saving minutes and loading times across the duration of a run still yields a net time save without them. It is estimated that hard disk drives can save around 2 full minutes in loads across the any% speed run. So despite losing somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds with the current lagless theory routes, there's still more than enough time saved to encourage players to make the switch. The hard disk meta therefore makes lag clips no longer the meta, and entirely obsolete for full game runs. Now you might be asking yourself, if this saves so much time in loads, why wasn't this option implemented years ago? Well, because the goal of speedrunning is to optimize a game, not necessarily to make it faster. By making load time shorter, you may save a lot of time at first, but the game will quickly readjust to the same level of optimization and meta it was stuck at before the hardware upgrade, barring some of the routing changes made from having slightly faster loads. You'd enjoy a couple of weeks of easy runs, and then everything would just go back to normal. So in the past when we weren't aware of how unpredictable these disk drives are, it made sense to disallow hard disk loads, because any old disk was suitable for the meta already, it was highly accessible. So in modern times, we are now allowing hard disk loads to encourage speedrunners to play off disk and actively discourage the disk defacing meta, since if you're trying to achieve the best possible leaderboard time, you won't be using a disk anyway. And with such a monumental increase in time save, you won't have to ask them twice to switch. Downloading the game to your official hard drive that comes in every Xbox and preserving your copy of the game is therefore the new, and sustainable, most effective tactic available. And with our disk drives and discs themselves degrading over the years to come, it was only a matter of time before we came to this conclusion anyway. In fact, outside of obsoleting the gray area lag clip strategy, there are several other unintended consequences of this change that make the Switch even more appealing. You see, there's actually more than just music being read in real time on the BFB disc. Sometimes, if, say, the laser has a tough time reading the disc in that specific instance, the game can lag for around half a second to a second on initiating an in-game cutscene, and smaller, less noticeable amounts of lag can occur when loading text boxes. Effectively random, this further begs the question why we hadn't obsoleted discs earlier if speedrun rankings should be mostly based on skill. Though it likely won't add up to more than several seconds across a given run, those several seconds will be more and more cherished as the game becomes more optimized and more competitive. And speaking of competition, the hard disk switch is actually fantastic for that as well. Instead of having to comb through listings and message sellers asking about one of the five different disk drives from a specific year range in which will eventually burn rings in your disk, there are now only two different hard disks of Available for your consideration, the Western Digital and the Seagate. The Seagate and Western Digital do have slightly different load speeds, the Seagate being slightly faster. However, the difference between these two drives is far less significant to any percent speed runs compared to the differences among the many disk drives, ranging from over 30 seconds to a full minute of time loss. And in the Thompson's case, you can even lose up to four minutes on that piece of garbage. But when installed to a Western Digital hard disk drive, a player will lose at most just under 20 seconds compared to to a runner on a Seagate. That is absolutely incredible compared to what we were dealing with before. Unless you are absolutely pushing your limits in BFBB, any Xbox you purchase is now viable for speedrunning the game at a competitive level. And according to this chart found within the Xbox modding community, the version range for which you can acquire the Seagate is exceptionally large, and these versions also correspond to dates. If you purchase an original Xbox from the latter half of 2003 and later, you're probably going to end up with the Seagate, but even if you don't, the Western Digital is still capable of very competitive runs. Either way though, whatever Xbox you have collecting dust in your closet should be perfectly fast for running the game. That hard disk in there was hardly used outside of saving your game when you were a kid, and they are all speed demons. Even more accessible are the tools for setting this up, and I would assume since it's 2021, if you own an Xbox you might have already soft modded it. Zim, the guy who came up with the idea to move the hard disk in the first place, created a curated video on how to do this specific to our needs, which is linked in the description if you would like to experience BFBB without the hindrance of disk and drive degradation. At this time you can get the USB connector required for just 3 US dollars and a copy of Splinter Cell to initiate the soft mod for under 10. There are also other games that can perform the exploit, and that's talked about in more detail in soft modding videos. I'll leave you guys to that on your own. I'm also thinking this huge increase in accessibility will encourage players from other regions which never got to experience the game to finally give the speedrun a try. That is, if enough people start playing it on their streaming services. So what's my personal take? Well for me, I loved using lag clips and speedruns of this game. They created several challenging strategies which made the game more enjoyable to play and watch for sure. But now having far greater knowledge on why they work, and the meta they'll now encourage with our new understanding of them, I now believe that hard disk speedruns are the only way forward especially with how many other minor issues they solve within the community as a natural consequence. And with the incredible amount of space on the Xbox hard drive, I find it strange that downloading games wasn't a native option on this console in the first place as it was with future generations. I guess the Xbox can't be ahead of its time with everything, but thankfully it's 2021 and we can fix that easily. 
as of this day of upload, you may submit runs performed on disk or Xbox hard drive to the BFBB leaderboards, and no, we will not be accepting hard disk runs from consoles other than the original Xbox at this time, as their disk drives are inherently consistent and there is no issue to fix with them. Besides, playing off disk on those consoles wouldn't even allow you to contend against the best players running on Xbox anyway. It's the definitive version of the game, and has several small version differences that make the comparison to the inferior versions arbitrary anyway. But I can get into a whole other video on that topic, especially why we don't remove loads in RTA console speedruns. The PS2 and GameCube versions are perfectly fine for learning to speedrun the game though, especially Dolphin Emulator which I'm sure most of you have heard of. Once again, a condensed and targeted tutorial for soft modding your Xbox to play this game is available down below, and so is a full-on tutorial video for beating Battle for Bikini Bottom in under one hour. I recommend checking that one out if you're interested in running the game. For those of you who are, you chose a great time to learn. So in conclusion, all developed speedruns are unique, and modern problems require modern solutions. You can't just walk into EB Games and buy a brand spanking new Xbox and a copy of BFB off the shelf anymore. But old doesn't mean outdated, we just have to continue evolving. And for our own unique dilemma, this solution is not only justifiable, but arguably the ideal way of speedrunning our game with true integrity. Thanks for watching, and remember, licking your game disc is still illegal on other planets.